So we've been working on the binomial theorem, and we have done all the expansions. We've learned about individual terms. We've got a few things that we can look at as far as the actual applications of them. Uh, one is perhaps a wee bit more useful than the other. And in this case here, the first example is just a wee bit of number play. It's not particularly useful in the sense that we're going to use a binomial theorem to evaluate 0 0.98 to the power of 4. If you have a calculator, you can do it, do it in about one and a half seconds and get the answer. Why would you want to use a binomial theorem? Well, it's an interesting study of number. If you're interested, it's something that's kind of fun to play around with. And the only rules when you're doing these kind of questions are don't use a calculator to do any of it, because as soon as you do, then you're basically saying you could have worked out the answer from the start, just pressing the right buttons. So if you're going to do this, do it without a calculator and just enjoy the arithmetic of it all, because that's what it's meant to be. So the reason why we can use a binomial theorem is because the numbers we're going to evaluate are going to be numbers that are very close to a whole number. Numbers like 1.01 .01 or uh, 2.02 .02 or 3.99 numbers that are close either just above or just below a whole number. And what we're going to do then, to get 0 0.98 to the power of 4, we're going to think about that as the fourth power of a binomial expression. The first term is going to be the whole number that it's closest to, and then as an additional subtraction based on how we need to then get to it. So, let me just run out of space there. We can say that 0 0.98 to the power of 4 is 1 subtract 0 0.02 all to the power of 4. Because 1 take away 0 0.02 is 0 0.98. Which means that we can think about 1 minus 0 0.02 to the power of 4 as a binomial term. It's, that's what it is. And we can expand it fully using our binomial theorem. And we've now got to the point where hopefully you can do this fairly confidently. We're using the binomial theorem and n is 4. So we can say it's the sum from r equals 0 to 4 or 4 choose r. First term is 1 to the power of 4 minus r. The second term, negative 0 0.02 to the power of r. We can't really simplify much. We can anticipate that we're not going to write down that power of 1 because that's always going to be 1. And row 4 of Pascal's triangle goes 14641. So that's going to be our coefficients. So we're going to write out all five terms in the expansion. Uh, 4 choose 0, my first coefficient is 1, and it's going to be multiplied by negative 0 0.02 to the power 0, which goes to 1, so my first term is just going to be 1. Plus, second, uh, start the second term is going to be 4, uh, multiplied by negative 0 0.02 to the power 1, plus 6 times negative 0 0.02 to the power 2 plus 4 times negative 0 0.02 to the power 3 and plus 1 times negative 0 0.02 to the power 4. And the idea is if I work out all of these values and add them together, I will get the value of 0 0.98 to the power 4. Remember the rule? No calculations. So, first couple of terms are easy. 4 multiplied by negative 0 0.02 is negative 0 0.08. Next one, we're starting to get into um, smaller numbers, so let's just remind ourselves of the rules. Uh, if you square that number, we know it's going to be positive because it's a negative times a negative is positive. There are two numbers or two digits after the decimal point because we're going to multiply it by that same number again, our total, our answer is going to have four digits after the decimal point. 
So I know that the last digit is going to be 2 squared. 2 squared is 4, which means I need to put another three zeros to give me my answer. So negative 0 0.02 squared is positive 0 0.0004. Let's look at the next term. We've got 4 times this next number cubed. So a negative cubed is still negative. We're now going to multiply 0 0.02 by itself two times, which means that when we do that, the answer is going to have six digits after the decimal point, two for each number. So because we're multiplying effectively three times, two threes are six, we know that the last digit, two cubed, is going to be eight. So our last digit is going to be an eight. It's going to be five zeros. One, two, three, four, five, point zero. And the very last one, negative 0 0.02 to the power 4. We know that, we'll put it down here, it's going to be positive. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. Two digits after the decimal point, four times, is eight decimal places. If the last two digits are 1 and 6, I need six more zeros. 3, 4, 5, 6, decimal point. And there we go. I've got one more line of simplifying just to get rid of those other multiplications. So 6 times 0 0.004 is 0 0.0024 and then 4 times 8 is 32 0, 0, 0, 0, 3, 2 plus 0 0.0003 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 6 all right, okay. So, we want to come up with an answer to this. There's various ways to sort this out. One way would be to add up all the positive numbers. So if I take one and add on that and add on that, I'm going to get the number 1.0024. That's four decimal places. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to have another 0, 0, 1, 6. And we're going to subtract from that a combination of the negative numbers. So we're doing negative 0 0.08. And we're adding to that this number here. So that's 0 0.08. And then we've got 0, 0, 3, 2. You put some zeros at the end of it if you wish. All right, subtract that. Uh, we've got a wee bit of a thing how you want to do it old school or not. 10 take away 2 is 8, 9 subtract 3 is 6, 3 subtract 3 is 3, 2, I've got an 8 here, 10 subtract 8 is 2, 9. And so the answer is 0 0.9223618. And if you go ahead and check that on a calculator, you'll find that it's exactly the same but you did it without a calculator using the binomial theorem that's pretty smart